managerial accounting, absorption costing versus variable costing. Now what we have here is a set of data for a single product company um, under a couple of different scenarios. First of all, let's look at the income statement data, the price and the cost data. Notice that they've got a single product and every unit of that product sells for $200 each. In terms of the cost of making, producing that product, the manufacturing cost include the usual, the direct materials cost is $41 per unit, the direct labor cost is $4 per unit, variable manufacturing overhead is $5 per unit, and on any given month or during any given month they incur fixed manufacturing overhead of $450,000. In addition to the production costs, the company also incurs selling and administrative costs. The variable selling and administrative costs are $20 per unit, and the fixed selling and administrative costs are $480,000 per month. Now, let's look at the unit data. Now we've got three different scenarios here in terms of units produced and sold. Notice in all three of the scenarios, we start out with the same number of units in finished goods beginning inventory, 500 units. What's going to differ across these three scenarios is the number of units produced in any given period relative to the number of units sold. So let's take a look at that. In the first scenario, scenario A, we produce 9,000 units and we also sell 9,000 units. So the finished goods ending inventory is 500 units just as the beginning inventory was. So the units produced in scenario A equals the number of units sold. Now in scenario B we're going to have a different relationship between units produced and units sold. In scenario B, we produce 10,000 units and sell the same 9,000 units. So since we produced more units than we sold, inventory increased from the beginning period of 500 units to the end of the period at 1,500 units. And that 1,000 unit increase is the difference between the number of units produced and the number of units sold. So that's the basic scenario. Number of units produced is greater than the number of units sold. Now, we won't actually work through the numbers on scenario C, but we will talk about it. So uh, let's just look at it. Again, the difference in across the three examples is in number of units produced relative to number of units sold. So in scenario C, we're producing only 8,500 units but selling the same 9,000 that we have in the other two scenarios. So since we produced fewer units than were sold, we used up part of the beginning inventory. And in this case, we used all. We sold all of the units that were in beginning inventory, so ending inventory is zero. So scenario C, units produced, is less than the number of units sold. Now, Let's in the next sit, set in the next video <laughs> we'll take a look at the income statement under scenario A and scenario B using absorption costing.